All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you for joining us for this live episode of Pathways to Energy Efficiency. We will be getting started in just a moment. All right, uh, thank you for joining us, everyone. Um, today, we're gonna actually be talking about community solar. Um, if you remember last week, we talked about hydroelectric and a similar concept and how you can access clean local renewable energy um, through types of subscription plans. Um, and so last week we heard um, about hydroelectric power um, and this week, we're going to learn about how we can get solar energy with the same type of concept. Um, so if you haven't caught some of our past episodes, they are available on our um, Facebook page, CCE Jefferson. Um, and they are always up there and available for you to check out at any time. So if you're interested in any of the topics that you keep see here on the screen and weren't able to tune in for our live session, um, please feel free to go back into our history and check some of those out. Um, as always, we are your community energy advisors. Um, so my name is Catherine Ripstein, and if you live in Jefferson and Lewis counties, I can assist you um, with any questions that you might have about energy in your home, um, insulation, windows and air sealing and all of those sorts of questions, I can help direct you to the correct resources and the right programs that might be able to help you access um, some incentives and rebates and programs that might work for you and bringing your house up to a more energy efficient standard. Um, just like that, we um, those same topics can be covered by our other community energy advisors in the North Country region. Um, Jennifer Perry is out of the Adirondack North Country Association, and Jennifer covers Clinton, Essex, and Hamilton counties. Um, and Nick Hamilton Honey uh, covers St. Lawrence and Franklin counties, and you'll be hearing from Nick a little later. Okay, so let's dive into our topic today. So what is community solar? Um, so what community, community solar starts with an array of panels that are located in a sunny offsite location. So some of you driving down the road may have seen these big solar developments popping up in areas around the North Country region. Um, the one that we have pictured here, this is actually in Saranac Lake, New York, um, and it, it's Adirondack Solar Power owns this. And this is actually a really awesome um, solar development because they are seeding the land underneath here with wild pollinator flowers. So it's just a very unique way to dual use that land, providing clean energy and also um, resources for some of our native wildlife. Um, some other areas that you've seen, I don't if you live by Clayton, New York, you might have noticed that there's a big solar development up along the St. Lawrence there. Um, so they're really just starting to come into um, popularity up here in the North Country region and across all of New York State. Um, but the big thing about this is that anyone in the area can access the clean energy produced by these solar panels and get credits towards your electricity bill, therefore reducing the cost of your electricity. Um, and so the, it's a very cool option if you're interested in locally generated clean energy um, and you don't have the ability to install solar on your own property, you can take advantage of uh, community solar subscription. So how it works is um, it's available for residents, small businesses, municipalities, um, but essentially the solar development produces the solar energy through the big panels that we saw in the picture before. Um, typically they're located in areas that are optimal for harvesting energy from the sun. They have a lot of um, open area and things like that. And so once they collect that energy, it's converted and put into the grid the same way that um, a coal plant would or a hydroelectric system would. Um, it's fed right into our local grid system. So um, National Grid owns those transmission lines and the substations, or if you live in a different area, it would be another one of our main utility providers. 
Um, and so from the grid, it goes directly through those lines right to your house. Um, and you end up saving money on your subscription. And it's a little bit more complicated but, than that, but that is the main point. So it's just, it still comes into your house through the same lines as any other power would. So I'm gonna show us a little video here real quick that does a really great job of explaining community solar. The future of clean energy in New York State is brighter than ever before. Communities across New York are now getting access to solar energy through community solar. They're saving on electricity bills, reducing their carbon footprints, and stimulating their local economy. How does community solar work? The process is actually quite simple. Solar panels are installed at a site in your community. Depending on the community solar project size, Dozens or even hundreds of community members can subscribe to a single project. Clean energy generated from the site is then fed into the local power grid. You continue to get electricity from your utility without having to install solar panels on your roof or property. You receive your share of solar credits through your utility, which will lower your monthly electricity bill. What about billing? Will anything change? You'll continue to receive your monthly electricity bill from your utility. As a subscriber to a community solar project, the solar energy that your share produces will appear as credits, lowering your monthly electricity bill. In most cases, you'll receive a separate bill from the solar developer. The credits on your electricity bill will cover the cost of the developer's bill, meaning you'll be paying less than you normally would for electricity. In summer months, the panels generate more electricity, so you will earn more credits. Any unused credits you have at the end of the month will roll over into the following month. When an entire community stands behind clean energy, some pretty amazing power can get generated. Find a community solar project near you by visiting nyserta.ny.gov slash find community solar. All right, and to sum all of that up, um, so yes, so basically you're subscribing to re receive uh, a portion of the energy that you use in your household from this solar development. Um, and they will provide you with a bill. So um, we still have to pay, I don't, so if you, yeah, we still have to pay um, delivery charges and things like that that come from National Grid because they own the infrastructure um, that our energy comes through. So the transmission lines, the substations and things like that. However, um, the actual energy itself, the kilowatt hours, the cost per kilowatt hours is actually coming from the rate that's provided to you from the solar developer. Um, so what that'll look like is um, credits on your utility bill, your national grid bill, um, and then you'll pay the community solar um, company separately for the actual energy. Um, and it, that sounds a little confusing, but don't worry. Um, we will actually be going over in detail what it looks like on your bill and how you can manage that um, in an episode that we will be airing after Thanksgiving. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to- The Nick. future of Ooh. clean energy in New York. I apologize. I'll turn it over to Nick, um, who is going to continue on with our presentation today. Thank you, Katie. Um, so why choose community solar? Um, you know, if you're interested in clean, uh, renewable uh, energy, <clears throat> but your home is not, uh, you know, situated in which you are able to participate in residential solar. And remember, we had um, uh, Scott Shipley on uh, at the beginning of November telling us a little bit about residential solar. Um, so if you're a renter, right, and you're, you don't own the building in which you're in, uh, you have a home, but there's not enough land for you to have residential solar, uh, you have a shaded roof. So really having solar on your rooftop is not a good uh, condition, um, or the cost is just prohibitive for you. Um, these are some, some reasons why uh, you might choose community solar. Um, you also want to think about uh, when com choosing community solar that you're, you could be saving money on your utility bill. So like Katie told us, 
um, you're not purchasing the solar panels, you're purchasing the electricity that those solar panels are putting into the grid. Um, and it's supporting clean, locally generated power. When we think about where our power might be generated, it could be uh, downstate, it could be in another state, or it could be from coming from Canada. And so I know that I'm interested in signing up for community solar. How do I do it? Um, you can just simply type in community solar, NYSERDA, so N-Y-S-E-R-D-A, um, in your search box and the NYSERDA uh, website will pop up. It'll have these three things listed here on the, the slide. Um, and number one, is finding a community solar project in your area. Um, you wanna contact these community solar projects um, in your area and ask them about rates and plans that they have for subscription. Uh, you wanna find a, a plan that works for you and go ahead and subscribe. Um, and then you'll be saving. So again, uh, the electricity provider is still delivering the energy to you. So that does not change whether you have National Grid or NYSEG, uh, that you will still have those, at, those bills uh, because they are the providers, the deliverers of your electricity. Um, you'll get credits on those bills, uh, again, either National Grid or NYSEG. And then uh, the solar project, uh, the solar company that you uh, subscribe with will send you a bill and you will see the savings there. So if I click on that uh, find a community solar uh, link, right, I, it's either going to, um, it, well, first you have to select your utility company. Um, and on the left-hand side is National Grid, and on the right-hand side is NYSEG. And then it's going to give you a list of potential uh, community solar uh, companies that you can call and ask about their subscriptions. Um, again, the link is at the bottom of this particular slide, but you can just go to, in your search bar, community solar NYSERDA and it will pop up with a page uh, that you can then go ahead and search some of these uh, projects. Again, we suggest that you go ahead and contact several of these to uh, you know, understand which might be a better, better solution for you. Uh, they, they might all have different um, subscription, you might have one that goes uh, short-term uh, subscription, a longer-term subscription, a month-to-month -month subscription. Uh, so please do call these companies and find out what their subscriptions are. And this allows you then to have that community uh, or have solar without having the upfront cost of, of panels. All right, so uh, that is community solar. Uh, remember that we did talk last week about community hydro as well. These are both uh, community distributed generation, the CDG that uh, Emmett Smith talked to us a little bit about. Um, so we won't be having an episode next week, uh, but we will be looking at uh, reading your community solar bill uh, when we come back in December. Uh, hopefully we will also have a, a residential solar bill that you can, um, we can show you how to read. Right? The week after that, we're gonna have choosing LED light bulbs uh, and then uh, rounding out our pathways to energy efficiency. We're gonna talk about our value and choosing the right insulation. It looks like we might have a question. Uh, so actually, Katie, can we go back to the maps? There was a question about, um, it doesn't look like some of the uh, community solar is in our towns. Um, and there are several uh, projects that are in the North Country, uh, most of them in the eastern part of 
the um, the North Country. And if you're you're looking here, there's those couple that are kind of around Plattsburgh, um, and it doesn't it doesn't matter that those particular community solar installations uh, are in other parts of the North Country or even even just further south in say Syracuse or over in Rochester. Uh, those those electrons go into the general grid, um, but you get the benefit of being in that subscription or community solar um, and having the, the knowledge that the um, that your use of energy is being provided by a clean renewable resource. Um, so yeah, you can you can still sign up for those uh, community solar projects, even if they're not necessarily um, in the town next to you. Um, uh, so there's a question about leasing land for community solar project. Um, we would uh, recommend that you talk to uh, someone in your local community that might be dealing with um, land use issues. Uh, you can call us, the community energy advisors, um, and if you need to contact uh, specifically somebody else in your town, uh, we are definitely willing to help you do that. Um, you you want to read the fine print if you're going to be leasing your land uh, for solar. Um, and generally those are not community solar projects. Community solar projects are standalone. Um, is there funding available to help with this? So generally, uh, there is not any particular funding that helps you with uh, subscription community solar. There are a few, few, few communities in the North Country, um, some in Franklin County, uh, some in Hamilton County, and then in Essex and parts of Clinton uh, that are eligible for a subscription uh, solar called Solar for All. Um, and that is uh, really uh, helping the low to moderate income folks in those particular parts of the, the, um, those counties. We do not have the, the solar for all available in St. Lawrence, Jefferson, or Lewis counties, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, there uh, another question about the, is there upfront cost with the community solar? So you're not putting in the solar uh, array on your particular property. So you're not having those upfront costs. Uh, you're not worried about um, uh, maintenance of those particular facilities either. You are just seeing the savings. Um, and though it seems kind of modest, you know, only 10, up to 10%, um, those can add up, uh, especially over the long term. Uh, and, you know, right now, uh, most community solar is looking at 25 years, uh, although we do know that solar panel lifespan uh, can be longer than that. Um, so this is a, a, a way to offset, um, you know, your electrons that you are using in your home and knowing that they come from a, a clean, uh, green, renewable uh, resource like the sun. I don't know that I'm seeing any other questions right now. Um, so again, you can contact any of us, uh, Katie, uh, Jen, or myself, uh, your community energy advisors here in the North Country with questions that you might have uh, about community solar or any other energy or energy efficiency related topic. <laughs>